Hello everybody, Drew here, tip of the mitt flips, where I'm a full-time eBay reseller, and every 100 subscribers there's a giveaway. So if you're watching, make sure to subscribe so you have a chance to win. I've got 11 orders going out today, and a couple high ticket ones, and for a midweek, because today happens to be a Wednesday, midweek sales, fantastic. Especially after Monday, it was already awesome. So this this has just been... I'm still, I'm, I'm in a good, good mood. Listings are going good. Things are going good. Sun's coming out. I love all the positivity right now. Now, if the stock market could figure out what the heck it wants to do and I could make some money on my stocks, that'd be a bonus. But, you know, times are hard. Can't, can't have everything. First thing going out is a VHS when good ghouls go bad. Let's see where I got that one tucked away in this terrible organizational system that's not an actual organizational system. Here we go. When good ghouls go bad. Christopher Lloyd movie. And I had never heard of it. And that's why I picked it up. And I actually, I think I might have had the only one listed. And I had it listed in $19.99 free shipping, possibly. $14.99 free shipping. Somebody sent me an offer of $10. Bucks. I paid probably less than a quarter for it. I'm okay with that. $10 free shipping on a media mail item is good stuff. Next up on the desk is Nike Air Jordan 12 Black Red Varsity. Over on the desk. Ah, here we go. It's in the old school box because these are not remakes, not the retros. These are original. So from your, I don't know, 96, 97 era, something like that. And these ones right here, double check to make sure the right ones. Yes, they are the black and red. For those shoes, I got uh, $200 plus shipping. I think I had them listed for $250. Um, so a decent offer, but I have, I'm already into the profit and I got a ton of shoes to go. So I'm not taking significant offers in my opinion because I didn't think any of them were worth this much. I didn't think a single pair was worth $200. So why wouldn't I take $200? This is bonus money. And then next up on B2, the Time Life li uh, Library, Curious and Unusual Facts. It's a not amazing board game. At least it wasn't the one time me and my sister played this in, I don't know, 1995. And it ended up back in a closet and never touched again. But today I got $4.11 plus shipping. So I think that worked out to an even $15 for him. Next up is a PS1 game, Animaniacs. This was my jam in the day. Not the game, but the show. And then I know they did a... It's 10-pin alley, so it's technically actually a bowling game. I know they recently did a remake or they brought it back or whatever, and I, I want to say it was on Hulu, but I never watched it. It's one of those things where just because you have fond childhood memories doesn't mean you're going to really enjoy it, enjoy it as a, an adult, and I don't want to, like, ruin those fond childhood memories, so I passed on watching the remake, but for that game, I got $15 free shipping. I paid $2 for it. Next up, Car 14 is a Hot Wheels Real Rider... Cobra car. Ah, right here. This one right here. The car is in terrible shape. And I mean bad. Uh, the windshield is missing. The hood's real floppy. It's dinged up everywhere. But what it has that you should look out for is what I said, real riders. And how you can tell that they're real riders is that they are rubber and not plastic. They don't all say Goodyear, but they... You can squish them. If it's a Hot Wheels and you the tires are rubber, they're called real riders. And the tires themselves, I could have just pulled off and sold for $9.99 free shipping. And for the car and tires, I got $10 free shipping. So they probably bought, them, bought that car just to rip the tires off, in my humble opinion. Uh, but yes, $10 free shipping for a car that is junk to most people is great for me. Next up on left, left three, towards the end I got more specific on my categories, but I think I moved them actually, but uh, Nike Air Force Mid 1, and it is these ones here, which I did move them, so they weren't even in the place I said they were. 
And this is the pair that I sold the exact pair already. And then I had a second pair and just did a sell similar and changed the pictures. And boom, both pairs sold for $100 plus shipping. Love it. $99.99 plus shipping. Next up on A1, this will be a pain. Uh, Gateway Multimedia Keyboard. And as you can see, this is what I meant by it'll be a pain. But I think it's his first one, so that would be great. If it's a wireless, it's not that one. It is this one. That would be great. All right, here we go. Gateway Multimedia Keyboard. Uh, I bought a lot of keyboards off a... Of a buddy of mine that I, I get stuff off every once in a while, but I've, as you've noticed, gotten more choosy lately. And so I'm definitely not picking up things from other resellers re recently because that means, you know, some of the margin's gone and I don't need to deal with that, which actually that uh, segues perfectly into a viewer question I had. And the comment, it was a comment, but a question as well, from Spirit Junkie. Seems like a great day. So much info in this video. Thank you, I appreciate that. I think the shoes have spoiled you. You look differently at items you picked up in the past. It might make a good video. Maybe your store is at a growing point. And Spirit Junkie, that is exactly what happened. Dollars in my store doubled. High end in my store grew exponentially. It was a, a game changing, to use that term. I make fun of it, but I, I use it all the time. A game changer for me to add that kind of stuff to my store. And it did change my mindset of how I had to look at sourcing because to, to give you a little, you know, dive into my life and my store, my family, we live in a Oh, what would you call it? We live within our means. That's how we do it. But I own my home, free and clear, no debt. We have two cars, free and clear, no debt. No credit cards, no debt. But that is because we live in our means. Do we have a boat? No. Do we have a second home? Not yet, but working on it. You know, just the, just the things. Do we go out to eat every week? No. We, we, do we buy a lot of our clothes secondhand? Yes. Do we, do we use our time as a uh, way to, to save us money? If I can spend five minutes on eBay searching through a bunch of listings to find shoes for my kids, I have traded time for the savings. Kind of the, the point... Here, let me try to... I mean, maybe if I stop moving, I can get to a point here. The point is that... Do I think this is sustainable where now everything's changed forever? No, not at all. But something, to give you an example, before the shoes, I bought a lot of stuff, as in a group of things. I'm going to try to list every single thing that I can make any money on in that lot to optimize every penny return on investment. Whereas now... I might buy a lot of things and then the bottom of the barrel stuff just gets donated or or put in the garage sale or some other avenue that I wouldn't have done before. And it allows me, it gives me a buffer to attempt to continue that train where more high dollar items are in my store and I can be a little more picky, but all resellers know you're going to still every once in a while buy some junk. You're going to still every once in a while think you got something good and you didn't. And I'm still most time going to list those things unless I have something better to list. So it did change things. And I mean significantly change things in my store. I'm not going to pretend like that's going to happen again or that's going to happen regularly. If that ha if a buy like that happened once a year, that would be okay with me. That would be perfect. And the other times, you know, when things slow down, buys aren't as good, thrift shops aren't as good, garage sale season doesn't exist in the winter, then those times it, it will shift back to, you know, I just got to do what I got to do. But currently, I'm in a very good mood because I don't have to do that. I'm able to just be more picky. That's what it is. It's I get to be more picky. Do I get to be more picky forever? That is yet to be determined. I have no idea. The faucet could turn off tomorrow and I got to go back to listing $7.99 books, 50 of them a day just to get by. I don't know. But 
That is my favorite part about eBay. And that is the part you need to focus on is that your business does not have to look like my business or whoever else you watch or wherever you get your information. You need to take the bits and pieces that work for you and build your own business out of it, your own business model. If you decided that you wanted to make $10,000 a year in profits, but you only want to sell one item a year and that's your store, you could do that. Is that a good business plan for me? No, it'd be a terrible business plan because you got to have extreme startup capital because the thing you're selling would probably cost you $10,000 and then you sell it for $20,000. You would have to have the ability to store whatever that thing is. You'd have to have a, a way to source whatever that thing is. You could build a business that way. Would that work for me? Not even close. Not even close. It would also make for very boring videos because I'd make one video a year. So you got to take all the bits and pieces from all other people's businesses, all other people's experiences, and then you mold those into what your business looks like. And I know that's a little off of what the topic was, but yes, it has changed my store. Do I think that'll change my store and the way I approach things forever? I don't think so, but I, I don't know. I don't know the future. And for the keyboard, if I did not say $9.99 plus shipping, and I will make some money on the shipping. Next up, I'm a genius. B3A is a Pyrex percolator lid, basket lid. It is this uh, tiny, itty bitty piece of aluminum. And for this, I got $19.99 free shipping. And I paid 10 cents for this. I posted on Instagram that I paid 20 cents. I turned it into $20. Um, but that just makes for a better, better post. 20 cents to $20. Either way. But 10 cents into $20 free shipping is fantastic. And the reason... I was able to find this is through experience. I had sold a lot of the Pyrex Percolator Flameware coffee pots. I've sold 15 of them, 10 of them, something like that. And so I knew what this was and it's sitting on a shelf like that. And I spotted it in a bunch of, I don't know, coffee makers and blenders and stuff. It was just sitting on a shelf and I spotted that and that turns 10 cents into $20. Free shipping, so 10 cents into $15 after fees and whatnot, but that's what experience gets you. Would I have spotted that two years ago? Probably not. Would I have known what it was? Probably not. Would I have looked it up? Probably not. Next up, uh, took an offer, but it is a Porsche Carrera 911. This one right here. And unfortunately it would be worth more and I would have waited out for more money, but there is, if I remember correctly, a crack in the windshield. Maybe that was the other one I sold. I did have two of them. So it must've been the other one. I guess I should have held out, but I probably paid four or five dollars from that for that, and I got fifteen dollars plus shipping. So it's time to go. Next up on C six is vintage Clio, I think is the name wrapping paper, which again this has been listed for a little bit, and I think it must have been over a pound. I thought it would have been a first class shipper, and I messed up on the shipping uh, for that item. $11.99 plus shipping, and it is, pull it out real quick, it is, as I said, vintage wrapping paper, new in package, estate sale, garage sale, I don't remember where I got this. I actually got two packs, one of them was open, and so we just used that for our own, we used it last Christmas. And then this one, I don't remember what I had it listed for, but I think I had it listed $11.99 plus shipping, and that's what it got paid for it. And this is how I'm gonna ship it, too. If it's over a pound, which it does feel like it might be, I'll throw it back in that box and I won't turn it into a box. I'll just leave it flat, tape the edges, good to go. And then last thing going out is a PlayStation 3 game, Tiger Woods PGA Tour, right down here. And for that game right there, I got $8.99 free shipping. So again, sports games, not your best, but I came, I'm assuming in a lot of games and I just listed them all. Okay, well, this is interesting and also an issue. Uh, I'm just about to pack up um, the shoes I sold and I realized that the listing says code 136001. And the code on the box is 130690, which those are the exact same shoes, but 
these ones are from 1997 and the code 136001 is from like 2003. So these have to get sent off to authentication and by default these are going to be not authentic because the code doesn't match the shoes. In my opinion, I think that's how it's going to work out. Now, the error, the shoes they purchased go for about 200 bucks, what they paid for them. The shoes in this box go for about 300 bucks. So if it got rejected and came back, no problem. I'll just relist them for more money. Uh, so that's okay with me. If it goes through, they could be disappointed because it's not exactly the ones that they thought were in the, the pictures all match up, but the code is wrong. And so the year is wrong if that's what they're looking for. So I went to reach out to the buyer and say, hey, just so you know, I messed up. Is that okay? Do you want to go forward? Do you want to cancel? Anything like that? And I get this notification. It says messaging is turned off for sneakers covered by authenticity guarantee. I can't even message them to say that I know I made an error. I don't want to ship these out because I think something bad is going to happen. Not bad, but I think they're going to get rejected. And they have removed my ability to even do that. It does say learn more here. Let's learn more here. Okay, in the learn more here, I didn't learn much. But basically it says if they return them, they'll just make sure that they're authentic on the way back. So I can't even message them to say that it was a mistake and you want to go forward or not. And then now what they could do, not saying they're going to, this is my mistake, you know, could just, none of this could be a problem. It could just go forward. I don't know. But if it gets through authentication, because they are authentic, the code's just wrong and it gets to the buyer and they decide, hey, these aren't the ones I wanted. And they could just, they could send them back and it'll get authenticated and come back. But what they could do is shove the 2003s in the box to get authenticated on the way back? I don't know. Just seems very stupid. Why would you remove my ability to communicate with a buyer? What if I wanted to say, hey, by the way, I have 45, 50 more pairs of shoes and a 10 and a half. If you're interested, check out my store. What if I want to do that? That's just, that just doesn't make any, any sense at all. I don't know why they would do that. I don't know what the reason was. And I had to go through hoops to even find that out because where you would normally go to click contact buyer just wasn't there. And so I went through some other ways to try and communicate with them. Now it's saying message failed because you can't because it goes through going through authentication. I don't, I don't understand. So, I mean, I'm shipping them out. We'll see in a, in a, you know, a week or so. Authentication is quick. That that's a thing. I stuff I sent out Monday is already authenticated. So we'll know by Friday probably. Well, I forgot to film an ending. So that's gonna be all for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Subscribe, share, and be good to each other.